So I've had the pleasure of using this M2 MacBook Air for about two weeks now, and I wanted to give you guys my overall thoughts. First off, I wanna talk about if it's worth it, then if it's worth it over that M1 MacBook Air, who this computer's for, and to see how far we can take this entry-level computer, because again, remember, set your expectations. This is Apple's entry-level computer, so that's what it's gonna be. But let's talk about this M2 MacBook Air after two weeks of use. So I actually think that I'm very well equipped to be talking about this computer because I am the target audience that Apple wants to sell this laptop to. Remember, this is a MacBook Air. This is not a Mac Studio. This is not a MacBook Pro. It's an Air. So put this MacBook Air in that entry-level silo, and then you have a much better perspective of what this thing can do, and your expectations will then be met or exceeded if you put it in that silo. But having said all of that, this thing is freaking amazing. So just to let you guys know which model I have, I have the absolute baseline model, so 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, 10 core CPU, and that 8 core GPU. That is $1,200 or $1,199. You can actually spec this thing up and spend up to $2,500. Go two terabytes, 24 gigs of actual RAM, 10 core GPU in there, and you can really soup this up and make it a very expensive computer. But at that point, we're probably gonna wanna recommend one of those MacBook Pros in the M1 Pro and the M1 Max lineup. So I've seen a lot of reviews of this M2 MacBook Air and kind of hating on it because of some throttling issues, some overheating issues. And yeah, if you throw 8K footage at anything, it's gonna get a little bit warm to the touch, it's gonna probably slow down a little bit. But again, this is a MacBook Air, it's not meant to do that. Can it do it? Yeah, it probably can, but don't set the expectation of this being a super hardcore video editing machine. Don't think of this as a super like hardcore gaming engine or anything like that. This is a entry level laptop and that's what it's here to do. So let's talk about what I've been using this M2 MacBook Air for. So I've been using it as a laptop because that's what it is, right? I use it for email. I use it to communicate with my team via Slack. I use it for some Google Hangout meetings and Google Meets and Zoom calls with the new 1080p webcam, which is great. I also use it to have multiple Chrome tabs open. You know, I have anywhere from 30 to 40 Chrome tabs open at once at the same time and I've had zero issues with that. I use a Microsoft Suite on a daily basis, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, Excel, OneNote. These are all applications that open immediately and work extremely well on this M2 MacBook Air. And then I use it for content consumption, right? It's a great YouTube machine, a Netflix machine. I do some casual gaming with an Xbox controller on the M2 MacBook Air through Apple Arcade and play some things like NBA 2K. And it works exceptionally well. I've had zero issues with throttling, zero issues with overheating. It gets a little bit warm to the touch when I'm playing games, but outside of that, you know, that, that's a normal thing. You know, touch your Xbox, touch your PlayStation 5 whenever you're playing a game, especially if you're playing an intense game, it's gonna get warm. And I also use it as my main desktop computer, as you can see behind me, and with a single cable plug-in, a USB-C cable, it powers everything that I need to power and it's a beautiful thing to have. And like I mentioned earlier, my productivity suite of choice has always been the Microsoft suite. I'm a big believer in Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and now with everything being in OneDrive, everything opens correctly and works as it should. And it's amazing how quickly these things open. The second that you tap on an icon to open up a brand new Microsoft Office document or Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, it opens immediately. There's very, very little lag, if any. Like in my opinion, these things open way faster than it would open on any other Windows computer. And it's just the power of that M2 chip. And then when it comes to web browsing, it handles everything that I would want to and more. Like I said, I have over 30 to 40 Chrome tabs open by the end of the day. I'm switching between them all the time, you know, reading articles, I have videos playing, I'm actually editing stuff in Google Docs if I need to. So overall, I've had zero lag and zero issues. Not a single time has that click wheel of death showed up on this M2 MacBook Air. And it just seems like everything is just super optimized for this operating system, for this SOC. And it makes everything just a pleasure to use because everything opens instantaneously and you never have to worry about things lagging, needing to reset a computer, having to wait 20 minutes when you open up a computer for it to like load up and get that start screen ready to go. So everything that I've thrown at it from a productivity perspective, it's handled like an absolute champ. And then like I mentioned, I like to do some casual gaming. Now, I probably wouldn't enter like an eSports challenge with this computer itself, but if you are a casual gamer like myself, I play NBA 2K, a little bit of Call of Duty, I connect my Xbox or PlayStation controller to it via Bluetooth, and it works extremely well. Like long playing sessions of two, three, four plus hours of just sitting on the couch playing. It gets a little bit warm sometimes, especially maybe if you have it on top of like a pillow or something, which I like to do. But outside of that, I haven't had any throttling issues, no drop frames. When I'm playing NBA 2K and it is a little bit warm, I suspected that maybe I would lose a little bit of gameplay, but nothing whatsoever. Now yes, again, games like NBA 2K are from Apple Arcade, so it's probably a little bit more optimized, but I'm sure it works the same way if you download a game from Steam or use you know, Stadia or whatever other gaming console or cloud gaming service that you use, this computer is gonna be able to handle it in no problem whatsoever. But like I said, if you need 120 FPS, 144 FPS, and you're trying to enter an esports tournament, then maybe this isn't like a gaming laptop for you. 
but for the casual gamer, it's more than enough. And I wanted to give you guys my perspective on how I use this laptop, because like I said, a lot of the reviews are people trying to render huge 8K footage timelines on this MacBook Air, or they're trying to render games in real time and things like that, but that's not most people's use cases. Most people that buy a MacBook Air are the college student, are the entry level like office worker that just wants their applications to work and work extremely well and efficient so they don't have to worry about having to wait for something to load or having to maybe or maybe losing a file because it didn't save correctly and your computer kind of just shut off because of battery life. So most people getting this thing are students, young professionals, people that just want an entry level laptop around the house to share with a spouse or something like that. And that's what this computer is. But if you think of it in that light, then your expectations will be blown. Because again, if you are somebody that maybe has a hobby on the side where you do do some editing, right? You do, you know, have to use Photoshop every now and then this thing will be able to handle it. Now me personally, I actually use my iPad pro and an application called LumaFusion to edit these videos but I did actually record some 4K footage, I edited it on iMovie, so if you're in that iMovie suite and even that Final Cut Pro suite, it's gonna work extremely well, it's gonna render at quick speeds, it's not gonna get too warm to the touch, and I absolutely love it. So if you're a video editor as a hobby, or you like to kind of maybe get some GoPro footage or some footage from your iPhone, airdrop it onto the MacBook Air, and then edit it, you're gonna be able to do that. So it's kind of setting your expectations correctly, where this is not gonna be for an actual video editor that has that as a career, that's editing, you know, maybe some news footage, or something that's gonna be very, very task intensive. But I mean, it technically can handle it. It's just gonna handle it a little bit slower. But again, this is a $1,200 laptop. If you want something that can handle 8K footage, like 14 streams at the same time in multicam, then go get yourself an M1 Max or a Mac Studio or something that's gonna be a lot more powerful and something that's built for those use cases. This is not what it's built for. It just happens to be able to also do that and do it pretty well, honestly. And one of the biggest things that Apple brought over with the M series chip, starting back with the M1 processor is the optimization of battery life and efficiency is out of this world. I have not needed to worry about charging my M2 MacBook Air at any point. Yes, I usually have it when I'm at my desktop, I usually have it plugged in via USB-C, so it's always charged, but every now and then I go into the office in New York and I'm, you know, I don't bring a charger with me because it just lasts that long. And if you're inside of the Apple ecosystem and all you do is use Apple apps like Safari, like iMovie, GarageBand, things of that nature, you know, Apple Arcade, the App Store, your battery life is gonna be amazing. So I've had a day where I do nothing but web browse, YouTube videos, you know, edit Google Docs, inside of the Microsoft suite, creating PowerPoint presentations, then I game for two or three hours when I get home or something like that. And at the end of the day, I still have 40 plus percent battery life. So this is an easy, 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 all day, hardcore machine. You could extend it over an entire weekend if it's some medium to light use. And again, if you do wanna charge it, it does give you up to that 67 watt fast charging. Although in the box, you only get a 30, I think it's a 30 or 35 watt charger in the box with MagSafe. That's another thing. I actually haven't even used MagSafe because everything I have is USB-C and it's just easier. But that's just my personal use case. MagSafe is definitely very, very cool. And I'm glad they brought it back because it does open up another USB-C port on that M2 MacBook Air. And then the last thing I do wanna mention is the design itself. So as you guys can see, I went with that midnight colorway. And to answer a few questions that a lot of people have about this, yes, it's an absolute fingerprint magnet. So get yourself a microfiber cloth, maybe a little spray. I have one from Paperlike, which I absolutely love because it's like a spray and a microfiber cloth built into one. So that's a beautiful thing to have if I do wanna keep it clean, but you're gonna get a lot of smudges. It's a fingerprint magnet. And secondly, people were kind of complaining or saying that the paint was chipping, especially when you were plugging in a USB-C cable and you missed that little port. So far, I haven't had any issues. You guys can see with the B-roll and I do plug and unplug multiple, multiple times a day. And yes, I do hit the sides. I don't get it perfectly into the port every single time. So that's just something I'm just gonna have to account for and just see how it plays out over the next three, six, 12 months and see if there is you know, some paint chip or if the smudges go a little bit deeper than just being a smudge that I can wipe off. But for now, after two plus weeks of use, so far it's been great. Just again, it is a fingerprint magnet in this midnight colorway. I can't say the same thing for any of the other three colors like the starlight, the silver, and the space gray. And then Apple did add a notch to the actual M2 MacBook Air. I know it's kind of controversial, but for most people that are getting this laptop, it doesn't really matter. If anything, the additional screen real estate by bringing the bezels a little bit thinner, but still having that notch is a welcome addition for most people that get this laptop. I do wish that they were able to fit Face ID into that little notch, but unfortunately they couldn't, but they did add that 1080p webcam, which is still, you know, it's not amazing, but I, like I said, I do take all my Zoom calls with it. I don't have an external one or an external webcam that's 4K or anything. So it gets the job done, you know, perfectly well. Again, for those professional settings, for school settings, for, for just a casual FaceTime or video chat, there's zero issues at all. 
One thing that I did think I was going to miss was the actual wedge design because with that wedge design it gave you kind of like a nice little lip when actually typing and give you a little bit of an angle, but so far I haven't actually missed it. Yes, it's a little bit more squared off and you do feel it on your wrist while typing, but I actually have a little mop stand on the bottom of it that you just stick on and gives you a 15 degree angle, which I love. And then the last thing I do want to mention is the speaker system. So it technically does have a quad speaker system and they moved it from the right and left side of the keyboard to now behind the keyboard and in the hinge itself and it works well. It's pretty loud. If you have it on a table, you do really feel a nice little bass and a thump. So it's not going to replace like a nice Bluetooth speaker, but it is, in my opinion, best in class at this price point for built-in speakers in a laptop. So to round everything off, my overall consensus is that for $1,200, this is a great laptop, right? The M2 chip is there, which is extremely fast and supposedly gives you, you know, an extra 20% of CPU and an extra 40% of GPU compared to that M1 processor. The word talks that the SSDs and the 256 gigabyte variant is actually two different SSDs. So the transfer speeds are a little slow, but again, for the target audience, that's not going to matter. Whether it takes five seconds or 10 seconds to transfer one gigabyte file, it's not gonna be the end of the world. So people in this price point don't really care about that whatsoever. And they won't really spend that extra $200 to upgrade just for that reason. But one thing I do wanna end with is that even though this computer is great, in my opinion, that $200 that you're spending is actually going towards the design because everything that I'm mentioning right now with the M2 MacBook Air and what I threw at it and how it handles everything perfectly well, my M1 MacBook Air with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage handled all that as well. Like I never had an issue with that pinwheel of death like I mentioned with the M1 Air. Everything I threw at the M1 Air, it handled perfectly well in these scenarios. And again, it could also video edit in that creative side and handle some Photoshop if needed. So in my opinion, you're paying $200 extra just for the design. You're paying for the new color, the new MagSafe, the 1080p webcam, the new speakers. So you're paying for the new hardware, but from a software standpoint, the experience is pretty similar and I haven't found a personal situation or use case where maybe I see that extra 20% increase in CPU or that extra 40% increase in GPU performance because that's just not what I use this laptop for. This is a laptop for productivity, for email, for some video editing, for video consumption, for a couple Apple Arcade games. So overall, I just wanna leave you guys with that, that that extra $200 that you're spending between the M1 and the M2, in my opinion, is for the new hardware and the new design, not really for any software upgrade or operational enhancement because you're really not getting $200 worth of value in terms of being able to render a video out quicker or being able to type faster in Microsoft Word. It all works the same. So you're paying for the hardware in my honest opinion. But that is pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, I love the M2 MacBook Air. I think that the extra $200 for the hardware itself is worth it for me personally. But if you're somebody who's on a budget and you just wanna get into the Apple ecosystem, get an Apple laptop, the M1 MacBook Air will be able to handle everything that I mentioned for school, for work, and for all those other things that I mentioned before at a $999 price point and even $100 off if you get it through the education store. So again, think of this laptop as an everyday laptop that handles all of your everyday tasks exceptionally well, but can also, when you know tapped on the shoulder, can video edit, can photo edit, can code, can use Figma and things like that. So it's kind of like, those are just additives that's like, oh wow, it does work well and works well enough for my personal use case. Versus if you need something that's a lot more powerful, you don't need a MacBook Air, you need a MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, leave a little comment down below and let me know if you guys picked up an M2 MacBook Air or if, you're, if it's worth the upgrade for you or what do you think overall. But if you guys wanna watch some more Mac OS, iPad OS, or iOS videos, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando and I'm out of here. Let me know what you think about the mustache.